Hi, I'm Steve Garfin. I'm from uh, San Diego. Um, wh while Jeff is lining things up, I'll just tell you how I got involved in, in this. I was one of those, I don't even, I know where the SI joint is, but it's not part of anything clinical. And they had a, uh, a summit, and they had some, to me, very prestigious people, including Mark Riley, who's one of the brightest people I've ever met, and clinically very clever, if that's the word. But also David Polly, um, Mark Swinkowski, and John Sombrano, and some really strong people, John Glazer, <clears throat> who talked about the SI joint like it was a real thing, like it really could create symptoms, and there may be some treatment considerations that over 25 years I've completely missed. So um, I, Mike Moore, who's here, would say you're exactly right. You've missed it for <laughs> at least since 1992, since he got involved. Uh, so I'm, I'm just going to go and, and sh sort of show you very fast um, a, a, a snapshot of, of what I learned and what I've since learned and, and understand about the SI joint and what's out there. And I, I am a consultant for SI bone, and uh, being a naysayer, the obvious thing was for Mark and Jeff to appoint me the PI for their national study. Uh, <laughs> anyhow, overview. So who has SI joint pain? It is a doc diagnostic challenge, which uh, Dave Polly will talk about later. But SI joint, of course, is at the junction of the hip and the lumbar spine and can create symptoms in either location that are confusing and confounding. And then what do you do with it? And is there uh, a, a diagnostic algorithm or best direction? And I think Dr. Sturgeson will talk about that. So the SI joint is a, it's a, it's the sacrum is wedged between the ilii. There's a large surface area. The anterior inferior portion is the joint. So if you're doing injections, you've got to get into the right place, uh, which is not always so clear for who's ever doing the injection, particularly if it's not us as, as surgeons. Uh, there is a minimal capsule, but there's very, very strong ligaments. So these could be disrupted. These could be arthritic, just like any other joint in the body, even though the motion is minimal. It is inter innervated. If you go through the literature, it is not clear where the innervation comes from. Somewhere in the lumbar spine, from L2 or to S2, it can be ventral rami, it could be dorsal rami, anterior column, <clears throat> posterior column of the joint. It's a, it's a little hard for me, and maybe some of the speakers will address it, about RF ablation. When the nerves are going anterior, posterior from multiple places, it's a little unclear how can you just kill a nerve and get rid of a pain in a joint like this, but it certainly can sense pain. Uh, there's changes with age, just like any other joint. Uh, it starts out smooth, it ends, it gets very irregular. The motion may change, but it doesn't change necessarily reproducibly in symptomatic individual. But the changes can be construed as arthritic and a cause of pain, like, again, other more, more ball and socket types of joint. There is motion. It's not increased, as I've said, in symptomatic individual. It's not decreased. Uh, there's no direction that it goes. The total motion is less than four degrees. It's just not a lot, so it's almost impossible to measure on, on plain x-rays. So the challenges for maybe many of you, maybe not, but for people like me was just awareness of it, identifying and localizing the source of the pain, which you'll hear more about today. And as David Polly talks about, um, the pain can be from there and other places, like the back and the hip, and then what's the treatment? The causes of SI joint, most of it is not known, but let's assume, like the low back, it's degenerative. Everybody can come up with a history of a fall on their buttock or sitting hard or riding a horse, but that there's no consistency with that. Uh, I started, as I'll show you an example of, with seronegative spondyloarthropathies. It's very easy. It's a clear diagnosis. There's lots of drugs. If they fail, there's something to do, and that's when I raised my hand and called Mark Riley to please come down and let's do a case, uh, and infections, which also are pretty obvious. What I'm going to show you is just some examples, and you don't have to read them all, but the literature is pretty full of talking and articles on the SI joint. 
whether in a degenerative nature or, or non-clearly diagnosed nature. It goes back to 1987, if not before that, and very recent. There's lots of literature on SI joint pain after lumbar sacral fusion. It can be due to long fusions where the motion is picked up by the SI joint or the stresses or loads. It could be uh, when we took a lot of bone graft and we used to harvest the whole crest, we uh, violated the SI joint, or maybe now screws or rods cross the joint. And there's a, a fairly strong literature showing it's about, I don't know, 20, 34, 35% of long fusions that go to the sacrum may develop SI joint pain. You can't read this. I know you can't read that. This is not why I'm showing it to you. There's also a abundance of literature on the SI joint as a cause of pain and diagnosing and perhaps treating it with SI joint injections that are all radiologically controlled. So the SI joint uh, is a component of low back pain. Uh, the exam, at least as I, I was taught it, and uh, does not include a complete exam of the SI joint. It takes less than five minutes. I do now include that. My residents and fellows now include that. It's, it's still not easy to separate from the spine. It's pretty easy to separate from the hip, I think. Provocative pain tests for SI joint are not used regularly by many of us surgeons. Uh, I have subsequently learned that anesthesia pain people pay a lot of attention to the SI joint. The, Strange thing to me is if they inject it so much and it relieves pain and the pain comes back, why they don't refer them for surgery? And it may be because the surgery we had, uh, which was open and only 70% successful at best with a high pseudoarthrosis rate, just wasn't so good. Um, for the most part, prior to this uh, meeting that Dave Pauley and his friends put on, uh, I was uh, absolutely wouldn't have done anything even if they sent me a patient with an SI joint injection. And I wouldn't have sent a patient for an SI joint injection, but I, I do now. And our, I think spine surgeons in general, the approach to the SI joint is it's very rare, as Jeff said. It's unknown and it's probably just comes from the back anyhow. So this is that example of my first case, a patient who after years of being treated for seronegative spondyloarthropathy literally came in in a wheelchair. Uh, I talked to her about open surgery, and I talked to her about uh, SI bone, and she waited six months, I think, wasn't it, Mark, that we try to get a time uh, to get this all cleared, and it is cleared by the FDA. She had bilateral pain. The worst radiographically and clinically was the left. Um, this is just a representative example of the eroded joints, left and right. Uh, we put these, uh, uh, Mark and one of our trauma surgeons put these uh, bolts across. Within two weeks, she was pain-free. I had her scheduled six months later for her right side, just because Mark said that's a reasonable time. She canceled that. I continue to see her. She's now two and a half years out, has absolutely no left or right leg pain, does not use a cane, does not use a brace, does not use a walker, and is off a lot of the meds she was on for that joint pain. Another example, perhaps on the other extreme, is a physician who was a horseback rider and one clear fall that she remembers. She came to me for an SI joint fusion. Um, nothing too remarkable. Maybe the joint on your left is a little wider looking on that film. Um, we did the left side. She felt so good. She came back in three months for the right side. Um, and this is a physician seeking this treatment. Doesn't mean physician are nuts too. But <laughs> she got better. Uh, she's back at work and reduced her meds significantly and, and her ambulatory aids. So I think the key take-home points from my part of it and what you'll get uh, at the end uh, of the day uh, is the SI joint should be part of a comprehensive evaluation of patients with low back pain. So I thank David for teaching me that and Mark Riley. Uh, multiple pain generators need to be evaluated. This is one of them. It's not a complicated exam. Um, and include the, the lumbar spine, the SI joint, and the hip. And successful treatment depends on thorough evaluation and thinking about it. If you think about it, you can get there. Uh, if you don't think about it, you can't ever get there. And MAS treatment may offer new options for failed spine fusion uh, and failed non-operative care if one chooses, which is what I assume you're all here for, to learn more about it.